evening everybody and thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you. Um, it's lovely to be here on a celebratory day in the college as well. Um, my name um, is Valerie McCormick and I work for Hibernia. I work um, as a supervisor of the students who are out on teaching practice. That's one of the, the jobs I do for them and uh, I also visit schools where, where the students are, are going in to do their teaching practice and arrange for mentors in the schools and I sometimes do talks like these for the various jobs and prior to that I was principal in a community school for 17 years so I understand the um, school system and what's happening here. So I'll just tell you a little bit about that, the Hibernia course and as I say I'll be available for the questions here from the from the table and also afterwards on an individual basis, okay? <coughs> okay, Hibernia, you may know, was founded in 2000 and the course I'm speaking about tonight is the Professional Diploma in Education, um, a level 8 qualification and the, the uh, uh, professional accreditation body is the Teaching Council. Now, what do you need to um, be a participant on the course? you need a level 8 degree recognised by the Teaching Council. And key to what I'm going to say to you tonight is that it's the applicant's your own responsibility to make sure that your degree or your award is on the list of the Teaching Councils, um, that it will be satisfy the criteria for the teacher education programme. It's so important that you check that your degree is appropriate for the um, teaching council. You don't want to find yourself having begun the course and then find having to top up maybe on a second subject or whatever. So please check that um, at the very outset. <coughs> um, you can register with the teaching council in one or more subjects. Um, and if you don't have a second <coughs> teaching subject, like if it isn't English and geography or Irish and French or very obvious subjects like that, a second subject uh, in the Hibernia course you do have to take on the curriculum methodology of a second subject and um, that will be assessed, your level of knowledge of that second subject will be assessed by the program director. The second subject might be for example civic, social and political education is often uh, a second uh, subject that people take on if they haven't got two um, regular teaching subjects. The other requirements are that uh, for the course is that in English you'd have um, a C at ordinary level minimum or a grade D at higher level or then the equivalent in the G GCSE um, again a grade C or um, an equivalent if it's from a different system. If you meet all those requirements then you will be called for interview and you have applied obviously you will be called for interview and interviews take place in Dublin in their own office in central Dublin uh, from Monday to a Thursday between the hours of 4 and 9 and generally speaking interviews take about 25 minutes and um, there will always be a subject expert if you're going to be teaching Irish you will, a certain part of the interview will be in Irish or German it will be in German and so on and so forth with all the, there will be a subject expert in, in the interview panel <coughs> Um, the structure of the course then, about 45% of the course is delivered online and 55% is on site. But the online is, um, you know, sometimes students ask, um, can you hold down a part-time job while you're doing the Hibernia course? And the answer is really, it depends on the, the level of the part-time job and the flexibility uh, there because clearly um, when you're out on teaching practice, on block teaching practice, you need to be free for that teaching block. But also when you're doing your study, you have to allow for a minimum of 12 hours per week uh, in online um, lectures and self-study. And in addition to that then, there will be online tutorials uh, again in the evenings um, from, for two hours per week. And there'll be also tutor online discussions and so on. The online library is available to all students. Then 50%, 55% of the course is on site, and that begins with an induction day generally held in uh, NUIM in Manila. <coughs> and then also there are on site workshops um, there on the sub subject methodologies and also on classroom management. And they're usually held on Saturdays 
and it's usually 14 Saturdays over the two year course. Um, and they're, they're organised regionally, depending on where all the students come from, they'll be organised geographically to suit that. Then there'll be three blocks of school experience and professional practice. Uh, the teaching practice then, what does that uh, involve in the course? The teaching practice feeds into every section of the course and one section of the course will be to do with the foundation of education, uh, teaching methodologies. I'll go through, the next slide will, will tell you what each of these are about. Developing the professional teacher and the school experience and professional practice. They're the main um, modules on the course. And as I say, all of those feed into your, when you're out on teaching practice, all of those areas that you're learning about feed into the, the, the teaching in the classroom. So those particular areas, and the foundations of education, in that module you'll be learning about history of education, and you know, the different systems, you've all come through one, one of the systems, whether it be the vocational system or the secondary system, um, or the community and comprehensive system, you'll be learning about that and learning about the history of education, various uh, influential and important philosophers and so on, all those uh, ologies and psychology of adolescence will be about how to motivate students and manage students in classrooms and so on. That's really what that module is about. Then there are 13 subjects that <coughs> Hibernia offers here, and um, they, they're listed there. Um, modern languages would be uh, Irish or French. Um, and uh, developing the professional teacher. Um, you know, gone are the days <coughs> where a teacher went into a classroom and closed their door and taught their subject. Um, so there's a whole section on this area which is very important in becoming um, you know, an active member and contributing to the whole management of a school. Um, so you'll be learning about inclusion, about school planning, all the legal aspects of school life nowadays, and um, the various programs, the Leaving Certification Program, the Leaving Certified Program, Transition Year, all the junior cert programs, the alternative <coughs> programs and so on. And then also behavioural issues and special needs issues and research methods all come into that section of the course. And then the school experience and professional practice is to do with when you're out on teaching practice. And there's, um, there'll be a lot of time given over in your study to the, before you go out on teaching practice to the preparation involved in all of that and the preparation of your portfolio and your class plans and your reflective journal. All of that will be worked on and then the actual delivery of the um, teaching and your reflective practice and then the whole IT feeds into all of that area then again. Okay, um, now how it, it's credits, uh, the teaching foundations section 10 credits, the methodologies 10 credits and then in the classroom uh, the 20 credits goes for the developing the professional teacher 20 credits for the teaching practice, school experience and professional practice. That's how the credits are, are broken up. Huh. Now, um, how is it assessed? Each module there is assessed separately and um, the teaching practice or the professional practice has to be passed independently. You can't compensate for that area. You have to pass that as it stands, as a module. And in terms of assessment methods, you can see the continuous assessment runs over the foundations, the methodologies, professional practice, but the developing professional teacher, 60% continuous assessment and 40% in an exam there. So various methods of assessing are through learning logs, that's really where you're reflecting back on your teaching practice um, and your learning in general. Uh, essays, portfolios, let your lesson plans form part of your very much form part of the assessment <coughs> and a final exam. Uh, so then, in teaching practice, uh, it, you begin with one week of observing best practice in the school, and that, as I say, is organised by a team member of from Hibernia, like myself, who will go out to the school and speak with the principal of the school and organise a mentor. Uh, who will meet with you once a week and who really acts as a critical friend. They're there not to judge you, but to support you. And then um, your observation doesn't have to be within your own subject area. You know, you can be assigned to any teacher in the school who um, will, will hopefully 
guide you through best practice in that school. And then when you do go out on your own, where you're teaching yourself, there'll be a block of four <coughs> weeks initially, and their second block is five weeks, and your third block is five weeks. And that's the current procedure. But I think you're probably being made aware that the Teaching Council intends um, extending this for uh, probably going up from um, up to a, a, another block of teaching being going into that um, in the foreseeable future. And in the course of that block, you receive a, a minimum of two supervised visits. And uh, the, the first visit is you're told about when it's going to happen and it's made, the arrangements are made between you and the supervisor. And in the second visit, in, in, it's unannounced. Okay. Um, uh, the second visit of each block. And um, then there's also uh, support visits. If people are finding it difficult, um, the, the, there are uh, supervisors who will go out and not to grade you at all, or maybe not even to go into the classroom with you, but to be of assistance and help to you. That may happen not even in the school, it may happen by arrangement between yourself and the supervisor locally or whatever. Um, so when, you're, when the, uh, your, your supervisor comes in to you, um, this is the form that they work on and uh, both yourself and the supervisor work together and uh, when class is over you would come out and discuss it with them, with the supervisor and they would look at the, um, how things went well for you and maybe how things could be improved or might, you might do differently on reflection. And the areas that we would look at are, as I say, that area there where we would look at your portfolio and see all your planning and how that worked out and did that, um, did that support a good class? Was there a good dynamic in the class and did that work for you there? Your, did all your planning work according to plan? Or did you have a plan B if it didn't work out? Whatever. Then teaching and learning in the classroom is what actually happened in the 35 or 40 minutes that, was in, that, that you were teaching in the room. And then there's a, uh, um, there the area of class and pupil management, how it worked there for you. And we're very aware that there's different schools and different levels of ability and different levels of motivation from one school to another. So you, you know, you're not assessed on um, if, if it's a difficult class or a non-motivated class, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be penalised because of that. It would be how you handled it and how you managed it really is what you would be assessed on there. And that last category there is about uh, looking at your reflective journal. Um, all of that would be uploaded, uh, and you know, your supervisor would look at that to see how each class is going. Even while you're, while they're not in um, examining you there, they would have access to your lesson plans all along, and they would be looking and discussing with you how you assess and reflect and adapt as you go along, and what changes you make, and how do you learn from from mistakes and so on. So that's filled out together, and I think that's very useful because you, you know, nothing is said that you haven't agreed with uh, as as that's done, and um, then that goes towards the, the final marks. <coughs> so the current group who came in in 2012, just to give you an example of the the, um, the time scale there, um, they had their induction in Maynooth in October, and they'll be working away on methodologies now. They'll be going out in January and uh, February um, 13, that should say, for the first week's school observation, and then four weeks um, of teaching practices, the first block, and then back to um, their own work, um, and then the second block of teaching practice comes up September, October, and again the third block the following, the following spring, so you can see how the two years works there. <coughs> The application fee is 75 euro. Um, the course fees are eight, almost 9,000, 8,950 graduation fee, and there is tax relief available currently at the standard rate of tax there. Um, and that, I think, is probably subject to change as well. I'd advise that you go on the Hibernia website uh, as the Teaching Council are making changes um, there. Uh, please keep an eye there. The, the um, information there is available from www.hiberniacollege.com and um, the phone numbers there. 
and as I said, we <coughs> take applications on a rolling basis because it's not just once a year, there will also be an intake coming in in the spring, now in March, and then again in the autumn. So that's the way it works with my birthday. <coughs> so thank you very much.